War is hell, and it can be one hell of a scary place to be. Thanks to a wide assortment of weapons and munitions, there is a plethora of terrifying ways to meet your maker. But what are some of the scariest war sounds ever recorded? Stay tuned and find out. 500 Pound Bomb The 500 pound bomb has become a workhorse munition for NATO forces in the Middle East, but it's a weight class of weapon used by militaries all over the world. These bombs are typically used against stationary targets, such as buildings or defense positions, and rely on sheer blast force to rip apart anything unlucky enough to be its target. In this recording, we can hear two 500-pound bombs being dropped on Syrian civilian buildings by Russian jets supporting the Assad regime. Depending on who's delivering a 500-pound bomb to your location, your only warning might be the sound of a jet engine roaring as it flies in low and slow to ensure its accuracy. But if you're a Middle Eastern terrorist on the wrong end of a NATO plane, you'll probably hear nothing at all but the faint sound of a high-flying jet somewhere in the sky above. While unsophisticated militaries typically use these weapons as dumb gravity bombs, NATO forces have equipped their munitions with laser-guided seekers and GPS technology, ensuring pinpoint accuracy even when dropped from tens of thousands of feet in the air. A-10 Warthog Attack Run Once more, just how scary this sound is largely depends on whose side of the fight you're on. If you're on the US's side of the fight and you're being engaged by enemy infantry or tanks, there's no sweeter sound in the world. If you're the bad guys loaded up in even the toughest modern tanks, though, then there's no more terrifying sound in the world than that of a US Air Force A-10 Warthog on an attack run. The infamous brrrr sound of an A-10's main cannon firing is known throughout the world, and the airplane is basically built around the giant 30x173mm GAU A-8 Avenger autocannon. This cannon is not only one of the most powerful ever built into an aircraft, but it's in fact so powerful that the plane cannot fire its main weapon and maintain a level flight. It must attack at a downward angle or else risk stalling out due to the massive recoil from the cannon firing at 3,900 rounds per minute. Spitting out depleted uranium armor-piercing shells, there's literally nothing on planet Earth that'll protect you from a lurking A-10 if it decides you're its next meal. World War II V-1 Bomb Nowadays, flying bombs are pretty much par for the course, but for the residents of southern England in World War II, flying bombs were a new and very terrifying reality. These buzz bombs, as they became known, had an extraordinary range of hundreds of miles and were fired in great numbers in a bid to crush England into submission. If you were a British civilian thinking you were safe miles from the front lines, the V-1 was there to remind you that in this new century of warfare, nowhere was safe. were fired in their thousands in a bid to crush England's resolve to fight, sometimes as many as 100 in one day. Thankfully, the weapons were only crudely guided, and while they could hit a general zip code thanks to a crude guidance system, they carried a thousand kilograms of explosives, making them devastating no matter where they landed. Originally, the V-1 was meant to have a much more sophisticated guidance system using radio waves, which would have allowed it to be used as a precision weapon against Allied military targets. Thankfully, Hitler, who was in a blind rage over the Allied invasions at the time, decided against this idea and planned to use it only as a terror weapon against civilian targets. If Nazi Germany had indeed used nearly 10,000 V-1s as precision-guided munitions, World War II might have had a completely different ending. Pentagon's Ghost Laser Back in the Vietnam War, the United States military developed a terrifying tape of a ghostly sound meant to scare the pants off the superstitious Viet Cong and North Vietnamese. The tape was played from speakers mounted on helicopters and boats and proved to be fairly effective. Today, though, the Pentagon is kicking things up to 11 with a laser meant to create voices and other terrifying sound effects out of thin air. Incredibly, what you heard was literally created out of thin air, without the aid of a single speaker. The Department of Defense is calling it the laser-induced plasma effect, and it's about as futuristic as you can currently get. 
a non-lethal weapon meant to terrify and confuse enemy soldiers. The weapon works by shooting a burst of light that creates a ball of plasma, which is then hit by a second laser. The second laser's interactions with the plasma are what cause the ghostly walkie-talkie noises like you heard. The scientists working for the US military are very confident that soon they'll be able to make it actually talk intelligibly. Vietnam Ghost Tapes in our previous entry, we mentioned the infamous Vietnam ghost tapes, and when you take a listen, we're sure you'll agree that this is amongst one of the most terrifying things you could hear in war. Sure, safe in your room, it probably doesn't sound that scary, certainly not scarier than a Halloween sound effects tape, albeit with poorer sound effects. But imagine that it's 1965 and you're a peasant farmer turned soldier lurking in the pitch black woods of Vietnam when you suddenly hear these strange sounds coming from the jungle around you. The infamous ghost tapes were meant to play on the superstitious fears of Vietnamese soldiers. They featured the sounds of traditional funeral music along with long, haunting wails and even entire speeches from a disembodied voice in Vietnamese. This voice would claim to be a departed soul calling out to its comrades in arms, warning them to return home. As the Vietnamese believed that a dead body not given a proper burial would doom the soul to wander in hell forever, the ghostly voice made a compelling argument to simply surrender or flee the battlefield. In the end, the tapes were met with mixed success, at times netting a handful of enemy combatants who willfully surrendered, and at other times being so successful that US forces were warned not to use them near South Vietnamese soldiers. Real Vietnam Ambush Vietnam is one of America's bloodiest wars, and unlike most other wars the US had been involved in, it was mostly fought on the ground at the platoon level. The war featured some of the most vicious infantry combat in modern history, and in the following recording we hear just how terrifying it could be to fight in the deep jungles of the war-torn country. In this clip, we can hear two different recon squads caught in a pincer ambush as an unidentified soldier calls out fire from both east and west. Over most of the recording, you can hear the sound of an M60 desperately firing into the thick jungle along with the sound of return fire from NVA weapons. This is the real life and death drama of soldiers caught in a fight to the death. Afghanistan Firefight If Vietnam was a war mostly fought on the platoon and company level, then Afghanistan was definitely a war fought mostly on the squad level. Despite overwhelming technological superiority, NATO troops often found themselves fighting door to door or ravine to ravine in the mountain deserts of the country. In this clip, we find out what it was like to be in the middle of a firefight in Afghanistan and what it's like to take a round directly to the chest. In the audio, you can hear the sound of gunfire all around the soldier who was wearing a helmet cam at the time. More terrifyingly, you can hear the distinct sounds of rounds impacting all around the soldier, until you get to the distinctive thump of a round striking center mass. Thankfully, the soldier in question was wearing body armor, and despite being hit an incredible four times, suffered nothing more than light bruising. The same can't be said of the Taliban fighters on the other end of the heavy American weapons. News Crew Survives Booby Trap War is not just dangerous for soldiers, but with the advent of modern media, war has become dangerous to the reporters whose job it is to bring us news from the front lines. Never is the job more dangerous, though, than when fighting a war against a terrorist foe such as ISIS, who does not respect the rules of war nor the distinction between civilian and military targets. Shut up. What? Okay. Incredibly, this Sky News crew was only feet away from a booby trap that completely obliterated a parked American Humvee. The bomb had actually been monitored in real time by an ISIS drone flying over the area, with footage of the attack uploaded to their social media. Jericho's Trumpets 
During World War II, there were few more effective close ground support platforms than the infamous German Stuka dive bomber. These aircraft absolutely decimated Allied tank and infantry forces throughout the war and were known as one of the most precise close ground support aircraft of the entire Second World War. Their pilots were amongst some of the Luftwaffe's most courageous, riding in their aircraft in steep dives that gave them only seconds to pull up or become a smear on the ground below. However, what made these aircraft even more terrifying was their distinctive wail, known as the Stuka Siren. These sirens were specially designed and attached to the inner wings of the Stuka dive bombers. Named after the biblical trumpets which downed the walls of Jericho in the Old Testament, the Jericho trumpets took a serious toll on the nerves of Allied soldiers who often found themselves the target of Stuka attacks. It wouldn't be until the balance of power in the air shifted that the infamous German Stukas would be shot out of the sky by Allied fighters, and the Stuka sirens were at last silenced. Nuclear Explosion What you just heard is one of the only surviving pieces of audio from an actual nuclear explosion, recorded from a distance of several miles away from the explosion. This is a sound that only a few thousand people in the world have ever heard before, and the last thing that many Japanese living in Hiroshima and Nagasaki ever heard. Want to find out what it's like to be in a real war zone? Then why not check out our first-person confessional from a soldier in surviving actual military combat? Or perhaps you'd rather check out this other vid for a change of pace. Either way, click one now.